Hello everyone, welcome to Alex518. So today I will be sharing a typical troubleshooting method for SMPS power supply. As we all know, SMPS power supply is widely used in most industries. So I have summarized our troubleshooting experience sharing with you and I'm glad you can learn something after watching the video. So stay tuned, the details are coming up right now. All right, so before I proceed to a uh, troubleshooting tips video, I would like to show you first a list of SMPS topology. So as you can see from the table, we have topology name, we have the power range, the DC range, and also if the SMPS is primary, secondary, isolated, and we have the typical efficiency and also the relative cost so if you notice the more the power of SMPS is also a more expensive and take note that each of uh, topology design you can find a DC range that can match into your application and remember that each uh, topology is also having a different circuit you can just try google it to find more details about the schematic diagram thank you in this slide i am showing you the typical SMPS black diagram. As you can see, there's an isolation line which determines the primary and the secondary area of the SMPS power supply. So on the left side is the primary area and on the right side is the secondary area. Alright? So I uh, will try my best to explain to you the block diagram of uh, ECMPS power supply. Okay, from the input, it came from the main AC line. So in our country, we are using 240 volts uh, AC. And then it will be directly rectified uh, in this block and uh, to generate a uh, high voltage DC and the uh, high voltage DC will go to a uh, high frequency switching circuit which compose of either uh, a MOSFET or a, a transistor in which this MOSFET and or uh, transistor is being controlled by a uh, duty cycle which uh, generated from a PWM circuitry so after the switching circuit it will go to a high power transformer and then uh, it will go to a output rectification circuit which is the final step and then uh, the output is being uh, feedback to the PWM circuitry in order to uh, make a regulation on the DC voltage output so the regulation is uh, composed of the feedback circuit and the PWM and the duty cycle it's very obvious from the black diagram that there's no regulator IC on the SMPS because the regulation is uh, happening on the feedback circuit and PWM 
uh, duty cycle control and one thing you notice that uh, the input the waveform is a uh, sine wave then it become a pulse pulsating DC then become a square wave in a high frequency and then at the output it go back to a DC which is a smooth DC all right so uh, I'm hoping that uh, I explain well but if not you can also try uh, Google and learn more uh, compared with this video. Okay, thank you. In this slide, uh, I'm going to show you a list of uh, common failure based on our experiences in uh, troubleshooting SMPS power supply and uh, potential root cause of that failure. And then the above image is the sample of a typical schematic diagram of uh, SMPS power supply. Uh, I color shaded some area in order for you to easily see the potential root cause of a common failure in the list. Okay. So first is the uh, no voltage output and a fuse uh, keep blowing so the most uh, common uh, root cause of this uh, failure is a uh, shorted components on the primary and the secondary circuit so most likely a diode a transistor or a MOSFET that you can find on uh, this uh, color shaded area also from here and uh, take note that uh, these uh, uh, shorted components on this specific area can also cause uh, damage to other components like uh, this IC also can, can damage if have uh, shorted components in here or, or here can cause uh, also damage the neighboring uh, uh, components and another potential root cause is the shorted power transformer windings but it uh, less likely to happen but uh, we have also encountered this kind of defect the next is the uh, no voltage output but this one is a fuse not blown it means uh, when you power up the SMPS power supply, there's no voltage output, but uh, fuse not blown. Okay, the first one is uh, no voltage output, but every time you power up, the fuse blown. Okay, so uh, this uh, type of failure, the no voltage output, but fuse not blown, the most common root cause are the NTC or the inrush current limiter this one and also the startup resistor uh, it could be this one and also the PWM IC this IC and uh, also the defective feedback circuit components so this this area this this area including this one or all the circuit in the all the components in the feedback circuit area this is the feedback so another uh, potential root cause is the leaky capacitor or high ESR capacitor so it could be uh, this one uh, these cups and also this output capacitor but less likely so all the cups that have uh, high ESR, especially electrolytic capacitors. So the next one is the power transformer winding open. And again, uh, it is very less likely to happen. But we also have experience uh, uh, that this uh, power transformer 
winding was open and causing this uh, this type of failure. So the third one is this uh, output voltage low, output voltage high, output voltage drop with load. It means uh, the voltage output is okay, but when you put a load, the voltage drop. Alright? Okay, so the potential root cause are the output capacitors and another potential root cause is uh, the trimmer or the pot is uh, wrongly tuned so take note that some SMPS you need a minimum load in order to uh, the fine tuning circuit will work and uh, the last uh, potential root cause in our list is the feedback circuit area so this this uh, feedback circuit area if you have uh, any uh, clarifications or question you can uh, just uh, drop uh, a message on the comment section I'll try my best to uh, answer you okay thank you in this slide I want to share the initial voltage checking and repair flow that we do before we go deeper in troubleshooting of power supply. Of course, at first, I need to remove the cover and making sure I get access to the components for voltage checking. I need also to power up the power supply based on input basis specification. Please take note the point A, point B, and point C because these are targeted points for our initial voltage checking. Below are the guides to perform the voltage checking based on our experience. You might do your method in different way, but uh, I just want to share our method. So at first, at point A, check the high voltage DC and validate the readings theoretically using the formula VDC equals to 1.4 times VAC RMS minus VD. VAC RMS is the input AC and VD are the voltage drop across rectifier diodes. But VD voltage drop of rectifier diodes are for me is uh, negligible thus uh, I use directly the formula VDC equals to 1.4 times VAC RMS so in this circuit sample above the VDC or the high voltage DC must be close to a uh, 322 volts DC here DC so if the actual reading goes too much high or too much slow I start the troubleshooting at the primary area and I will focus first on uh, checking capacitors and then I move to uh, semiconductor components so from the sample circuit above the primary area are this area let's say the high voltage DC at point A are okay I mean is okay so I move to uh, point B here to be sure the PWM VCC input so you can compare the voltage reading 
with the PWM data sheet. So from there you can see the range of uh, PWM VCC that is able to function. So let's say the, the PWM VCC is out of spec, then I need to uh, start troubleshooting the PWM VCC line and to find the components that cause the problem. So from here, from this uh, sample circuit, the PWM VCC line are this area. This uh, sample circuit is having a simple PWM VCC line. Some uh, SMPS is having a little bit complicated VCC line so you must uh, trace carefully and uh, make sure you are uh, checking the correct path the circuit path or the circuit line of the PWM VCC line okay let's say the the PWM VCC is okay then uh, you, I need to move to the point C here so from here I want to verify the VREP of uh, PWM and I also compare the VREP readings to the uh, data sheet of uh, PWM IC each uh, PWM IC have a uh, VREP information on its data sheet so let's say the reading is out of specs then uh, for me I would directly replace first the PWM IC and then let's say it got the same result then I would uh, replace directly all the switching transistors and capacitors associated with uh, PWM IC take note these uh, suggestions are based on our experience because some of the components, especially transistor, based on our experience, we cannot detect using the multimeter. So we will just directly replace those components. From this uh, sample circuit, we don't have uh, transistors on the PWM circuitry, but you might see other uh, SMPS power supply is saving uh, multiple transistors composed on the PWM circuitry. All right okay so uh, I have a, a note here so let's say if, uh, all the voltage readings from three points were okay then uh, what I want to do next then I must check all the electrolytic capacitors from the circuit including the primary and the secondary side because most of our experience the power supply problem caused by electrolytic capacitors so that's all for this video if you find it useful please consider unsubscribing and hit the notification bell anyway I'm happy you've been here hoping I can do better next time thank you Asko.